when I saw Sifia, good morning. My name is Pastor Philomena. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our morning devotion once again. I want to believe that you had a peaceful night and the Lord has helped you. And I want us to continue with our series that we began yesterday. And yesterday we looked at one of the ways of that will help us to wait on God. Ways that will give us the grace to wait on God. And today, by the grace of God, we will share on another way that will help us to wait on God. Yesterday, we, uh, we say that trusting in the unfailing love of God will help us to wait on God. And today, we want us to share on trusting that God has a good plan for us. One way of waiting on God is to trust that God has a good, a good plan for us. So for you to be able to stay calm in confidence and in the hope that God will come through for you, you need to trust in the plan of God and know it well. I want us to read the word of God in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 in the Bible. And it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Verse 12 says, Then you will call to me, and you will go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Praise the Lord. We started by saying that in our time of waiting, many of us will be presented to us, and some of these of us will will be similar to or look exactly like what we are asking from God. Some offers that will be given to us during our time of waiting will be similar or look exactly like what we are asking from God. Some of them will even look better in our eyes. But for us to pass this test in our waiting season, we need to know and trust that God has not just an answer but he has the best for us. Trust that God did not just create you, he has a plan for your life. This is what he told Jeremiah, as we are going to read in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, and the Bible says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet in the nations. So before God created you, he had already a plan for your life in place. So there will be nothing that will get God by surprise in your life. He has seen the end of your life from the beginning, including the challenges that you are going through or you might be going through, the needs that you have, sicknesses or any form of discouragement. All these are in the diary of God. And the good news is that God has a set plan for each one of them to get you out of this, a plan that will glorify the name of the Lord. A plan that will not harm you according to his word, nor bring disaster to you, but give you hope and peace in your generation according to his word. Praise the Lord. So uh, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12, in NLT version, Proverbs chapter 12, chapter 14, sorry, Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. And the Bible says, There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. I take it up again. There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. So as we trust in the plan of God, it is good to know that the enemy is also aware of our needs. And listen to what he told Jesus when Jesus was fasting in the 40 days in the wilderness. And the enemy told Jesus, you are so hungry, why don't you turn these stones into bread? It's a paraphrase from the Bible. This was a question that he was asking. You are hungry, why don't you turn these stones into bread? And then we ask ourselves, is it true that Jesus was angry? Or is it true that he had the power to change the stones into bread? But was this the will of God? 
They aren't the first to answer us. It is true that Jesus was hungry. It is true that he had the power to change stones into bread. But this was not the will of God. For him to change stones into bread and have it as food after fasting for 40 days. So this is what the wife of Job told, told us, uh, told Job. This is what the wife of Job said. Again, you are so afflicted. Why don't you curse God and die? Buenas was if you I believe this is what the Bible calls a way that looks like it is good in the eyes of men, but in the end it brings death or it leads to death. So it is true that Job was so afflicted, Job was in pain, he was almost giving up. But his wife was telling him that uh, curse God and die. Really, was this the will of God for Job to die in this uh, disaster or in this challenge? This was not the will of God. I'm simply saying the enemy knows your needs. And so if you are not focused on the plan of God, he will present his offers to you. And this is what the Bible calls a way that seems good, but in the end it leads to death. I had already said that. So may the Lord deliver us from the offers or the tokens of the enemy in our seasons of waiting in Jesus' name. It might look to give, uh, it might look okay to give a bribe and get away or a waiver on a penalty. Or it might sometimes look good to use a uh, favors, to use evil ways to get favors from people, from our bosses. But this morning, that this way leads to death. This morning, it is good to know that this way leads to death, according to the word of God. His word, the word of God in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. Proverbs 10 and verse 22 says, The blessings of the Lord makes a person rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. So pray and wait on the perfect will of God to be done in your life. It will make you rich, rich in your heart first because of the peace of God that comes with it. And also rich in the physical because this is the will and the promise of God. And then number two, there will be no sorrow. There will be no sorrow, no pain, no regrets, no curses attached to your blessing after waiting on God. So that which you have received from the hand of God will make you rich in the in the in the public. When I was if you that which you have received from the word uh, from the hands of God, it will make you rich, it will give you peace. In the end of it, it will glorify God. So my prayer this morning is that we receive the grace to wait on God on the account that he has the best for us and he has a good plan for each one of us. Shall we pray? Father, we bless your name and we glorify you for who you are. Thank you, God, for speaking to us in your word. Thank you because you have given us an assurance and a promise that you have the best for us and that your plan for us is good, not to harm us, but to give us a prosperous future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.